Okay, and we're just going to put this on our YouTube channel. And uh, if we have any good highlights that we can uh, use for promotion later, then we'll do that as well. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, the Committee of the 70s President and CEO, David Thornburg. He also runs uh, the Draw the Lines Project. So David, take it away. Well, thank you, Justin. Um, and uh, it's wonderful to see you all virtually from all corners of the state. Um, as uh, Justin was reminding me, this is the, the fifth award ceremony for our fifth competition. And it's a, it's a little bittersweet because this will be the last one. <laughs> But uh, it's been an amazing experience. And um, as Justin mentioned earlier, now we are seeing how all your good work is, is coming to bear on the, uh, the official process. Today was a really consequential day uh, because the Legislative Reapportionment Commission, uh, which I, I know a lot of you know or is the body that's responsible for drawing state maps for the first time recognize that people incarcerated in Pennsylvania should be counted for purposes of, of redistricting in their homes, not where they are incarcerated, uh, which a lot of folks have been arguing for a long time um, uh, should have happened and um, not directly related to your work, although I know a, a lot of you have been active on that issue, but it just tells us that we're in gear now uh, and that uh, this is now a time for, for your good work to, uh, to pay off. So this is a, a, always a lot of fun. It's always a lot of fun to recognize excellence and to reward people for hard work. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to sort of do the, uh, I guess, the play-by-play -play and Justin's doing the color commentary, or maybe we'll reverse roles in midstream. Uh, we'll sort of see how this uh, happens. But Welcome to all of you, particularly uh, family members uh, and friends of those who are um, being recognized for their great work. And with that, Justin, let's get on with the show. Wonderful. Thanks, David. I'm going to share my screen here and uh, do this without giving any further details or uh, future uh, decisions away here. But uh, yes, welcome to our mapping ceremony. These are um, uh, awards that we're giving out for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, and so um, uh, we're going to be uh, presenting honors to about 40 mappers today, um, ranging from $100 to $2,000 uh, in prize money. So we're giving, a, giving away almost $15,000 uh, to mappers who have demonstrated uh, an extraordinary excellence in um, any number uh, of goals that they tried to accomplish in community outreach that they were uh, attempting to achieve uh, and just overall quality maps that will help, as David said, inform this process uh, as we start the process for real now. So um, we're going to ask everyone to stay muted uh, um, through the duration of the um, of the meeting, uh, with the exception of our state champions uh, towards the end of uh, this award ceremony, we're going to have our first place statewide winners uh, invite them to say a few words. Those people do not know who they are yet. So hopefully uh, we'll catch you a little bit of Oscar surprise uh, um, uh, with your reaction. So um, we had uh, 287 congressional entries and about 25 legislative entries to this competition. So you all truly uh, represent uh, the best of the uh, intrepid individuals across Pennsylvania who uh, took this challenge on over the last year. Uh, these maps were judged by a combination of our steering committee and our citizen map corps. Uh, those members got together uh, at various points, and a few of the judges are on this uh, this call um, or this uh, ceremony today. Uh, and they uh, they chose um, regional winners and then statewide winners. What they uh, um, did, and so we're always careful to say this: the maps that are uh, being honored today and have been honored in the past are not necessarily maps that draw the lines favors one over the other. Um, what they are, are um, uh, a demonstration of mappers who were able to set a goal that they um, articulated, and then um, uh, through their personal statement and then the, uh, the actual map that they drew, uh, achieved that goal uh, and did so in an exemplary fashion. So you'll see, as we look at these maps today, you'll see a whole range of different values and priorities and different looking maps. And so our goal through this entire competition is to engage people in a conversation around what the redistricting process looks like 
uh, and demonstrate that there's no one perfect map, uh, but really there is an ideal process around which these maps are drawn. And that's uh, what you all have demonstrated, that it's something that needs to be done in the open, done with community response, uh, and uh, done in a way that people feel heard and represented uh, all across the Commonwealth. So we are going to be posting uh, all the entries, honorable mentions, all the reports up through state champions on our website, uh, drawthelinespa.org within the next few days. Um, so you can see, we're just gonna take very quick glances at the maps today, but you'll be able to read all the personal statements, click on the links and look in depth at each map uh, if you wanna see how people uh, drew Pennsylvania. So it's a, it's a great way that if you've got a few extra minutes, um, uh, once those maps are posted, we would highly recommend that you do that. Hey, so, so let me just throw in one, uh, sure. a couple of things. First of all, um, you mentioned who the judges were, but I think they deserve a lot of thanks. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, there have been times when our steering committee members and map corps members have been deluged with, um, uh, with uh, trying to with 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 entries and trying to sort through those and, and, and really pay attention to who's doing what has been uh, a lot of work. So we're very grateful to all of them. And also I just mentioned our steering committee. We've had probably about 75 people uh, in the course of the project serve on steering committees. We uh, rolled all that up into a statewide steering committee, which is now co-chaired by uh, former Republican Governor Mark Schweiker and Dr. Dana Brown, who want, runs a terrific center at Chatham University that promotes the role of uh, and encourage the role of women in politics and encourages uh, women to get involved. So, um, just wanted to underline our thanks to uh, to all the above. Plus, I wanted to prolong the um, anticipation of uh, when we uh, when we start handing out prizes. All right. Very good. On that note, uh, this is the order with which we're going to um, uh, do those prizes today. So we're going to start on the uh, regional level, um, announcing our youth uh, regional winners, um, West and East. Then we're going to go to the college or higher ed division. Uh, then we're going to take a quick break and show, you know, just a five minute video from uh, something that we've been up to over the last uh, um, few months. And that'll help build that drama towards our statewide uh, announcements um, on the second half of this program. So. That said, um, we're gonna look at uh, who our honorees were. Um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna flash up our honorable mentions. And so these honorable mentions might not have been the most well-rounded uh, maps in terms of personal statement, uh, community outreach, um, metric accomplishments, et cetera. Uh, but uh, they did uh, achieve uh, at least a few of those items um, uh, uh, in exemplary fashion, or their map did something very um, noteworthy or unique that uh, our judges want to, wanted to, uh, um, to underline. And so they'll be receiving some money and then also be featured on our website. So we do want to give them uh, a quick shout. Uh, and so in the, uh, the Western region, you can see here, um, Box Chapel High School uh, came to play. I think I saw um, Jen Klein uh, um, uh, on this uh, uh, roster here. And so um, Ms. Klein is one of our uh, steadfast teachers. And so um, Ms. Klein, your students uh, did a fantastic job. Uh, Emma Begg, and I apologize in advance if I um, mispronounce any of these names. Emma Begg, Mark Puthin -Puri uh, Puriel, uh, apologies, Mark, uh, Jake Mulhern, and Dong Hyun Shin. Um, great work on your maps. So now, David, shall we release uh, uh, number two, second place? Yep. All right. So, so uh, it looks like. Uh, Fox Chapel maintains its streak. Uh, Jackson Romero is the second place winner as youth. And Justin's going to talk a little, convey a little bit of the judges' sentiments about Jackson's now. Yeah. So our judges, they felt that Jackson did a, um, a wonderful job um, getting feedback from his classmates uh, and then also going outside his class and getting community feedback uh, and putting that into his map. And he also did, his personal statement did a really effective job of explaining why a limiting county and municipal splits within a map uh, should be something that is uh, valued by mappers uh, as it helps maintain cohesiveness within uh, hierarchical levels of government. So Jackson, congratulations uh, on your second place victory. Now, first place. Vivian Chow also, Fox Chapel, as, as Justin said, really did run the table. 
Um, so did. congratulations, Vivian. Uh huh. And so Vivian um, uh, put up the least amount of splits for uh, the Western Youth Division, uh, least amount of county splits, uh, and impressed the judges. Uh, but she did this while creating a, a very strong competitive uh, score for her uh, elections. You can see the map. Vivian has some creative uh, maneuvers in the Eastern region, um, which she discussed in her personal statement. She actually brought um, her own outside voting statistics into uh, um, her analysis of her map to try to create uh, competitive elections. Uh, but she also somehow managed to do it without um, uh, creating too many other county splits uh, around the state. So Vivian, congratulations on your, your first place prize. So now we go into the Eastern um, youth region. Um, and so these are honorable mentions um, uh, for uh, the Eastern youth. Uh, there are judges for this region uh, had a really hard time uh, uh, boiling down just a few honorees. And so you're gonna see in a second here, they named a number uh, of uh, um, uh, second and third place uh, candidates as well. And so um, Sarah Toth and Toth, I apologize if, again, if I mispronounce your name, Rylan Epstein, Grace Bath, uh, Alex Duffy, Elva Chen, and Olivia Chu, um, representing uh, these schools up here, several of which we've worked with um, in the past. And so thank you to uh, teachers like Jason Burke and uh, Dr. Athan Biss for, uh, for your work in putting draw the lines in front of your students. Um, the, uh, uh, this was a very challenging um, division for our judges because there were a lot of really high quality maps. So David, I'm gonna throw a third place at you instead of a second. <laughs> to, uh, to announce first, because they couldn't choose just a third place. Okay. I think it's Rina Hanimali is my guess. Is that right? That sounds good yeah. to me. I hope <laughs> Rina. So uh, congratulations, Rina. Rina. Um, yeah. On Rina's uh, map, um, uh, judges noted uh, that she had a, a pretty fascinating discussion of how she used uh, several family conversations uh, to create her map. Um, she also had solid metrics across the board, uh, and they felt like the, op the optimistic conclusions that uh, Rena drew from this project was something that they really wanted to spotlight. So they would, the judges would strongly encourage people to uh, read Rena's uh, personal statement once it gets posted to the site. So, and then David, another uh, um, uh, liberty that our judges took is they named co-second place winners. So <laughs> we, we dipped in the budget for the Eastern Youth Region. Um, and I'll, I'll also um, give a special shout out to the uh, Pottstown Area Health and Wellness Foundation. They are funding these prizes um, for the Eastern Youth. So they had a little extra money to give away, so. Uh, another Abington Heights that you can, you can tell there's some schools that really uh, have uh, risen to the top, but uh, Abington Heights is one of them and Ryan. Congratulations to you. And who's the other? Let's do the other tied for second place. That's same, same Ryan. Ryan Nee. <laughs> now is that yeah, Ryan Nee from Whitehall and Ryan Salon. Yeah. And Good to see Lehigh County represented too. That's right. So I'm gonna do Ryan Salani's first. Um, Ryan apparently drew 18 maps as he was uh working on his uh um uh, his process. And so he, he talks, he uh, has a scientific background and scientific interest. So we really wanted to uh, uh, take that seriously, that scientific process. And so we use that to create uh, the map that you see here. Um, but uh, our judges also appreciated that uh, not only did he have good metrics, but he also used um, uh, significant local knowledge uh, um, to, uh, to try to map different parts of the state. So excellent work, Ryan. Uh, and then our other Ryan, Ryan Nee, um, he actually uh, had the lowest um, combination of county splits and population deviation uh, for uh, this division of all the entries that were submitted. Um, and he also connected that with a very strong personal statement. So our, our judges wanted to uh, award Ryan um, with a second place tie. So well done to both of you. In our first place. Nicholas Booth. Congratulations, right. Nicholas. Another Abington Heights High School student. Um, so Nicholas uh, put together one of the more impressive personal statements that our judges read, um, in which he noted that a perfect map is not possible. Um, but uh, 
Uh, Nicholas did a pretty good job though. He had um, a near perfect uh, population deviation, meaning each of the districts were um, exactly the same population number. Um, but he balanced that with very strong competitive and compactness scores. Um, and so uh, with this set of districts, uh, Nicholas is our Eastern Youth Champion. Uh, and he and uh, uh, both Ryan Solani and Ryan Nee uh, will move on to uh, the statewide uh, judging that we'll, we'll announce later. So great job to, to all of you. Now we go to the Western, high, uh, the Western higher ed, right? So um, these are uh, students in either undergrad, graduate school, um, uh, who are um, uh, in the Western half of the state, kind of the Western two thirds of the state. Uh, so Leah Walco uh, and Colin Gressler from Carnegie Mellon, Isabella Fons from Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon, um, and Bella Bach uh, from Drexel University, um, who uh, maintains her residence in Northumberland County, which is right in the border of our uh, east-west divide. So Bella was able to enter into the Western region. So um, I was going to say, just that sound like a little academic gerrymandering there. <laughs> it is. So we have to we have to make sure the populations are balanced, right? Northumberland is not exactly west, but it's west enough for draw the lines here. <laughs> Must be a Bill Rosenberg production, I think. <laughs> So um, yes, but uh, so Bill is one of our, he's on the uh, um, call today. Bill Rosenberg is one of our steering committee members um, uh, and uh, has brought this to his class for, I think all three years that we've been doing this. And so Bill, we appreciate your support and congratulations to, um, to your students, uh, even getting one in the Western region now. So instead of just East, so congrats. We'll move on to our second place. Aiden Ludka, uh, who I'm not sure is on. Um, so Aiden uh, from Gettysburg College. Um, let's see, Aiden had his uh, maps had solid metrics um, and uh, a close to perfect uh, population deviation uh, along with uh, strong compactness, um, which uh, um, our judges decided to reward with a second place finish. And David will announce our first place winner. Natalie Britton from uh, Pitt in Allegheny County. Natalie, uh, congratulations. And I know you join a number of uh, uh, distinguished winners from the University of Pittsburgh. So good for you. So Natalie, uh, our judges said uh, her map was the most consistent of the submissions in her, uh, her region uh, and division uh, in terms of metrics. Uh, her personal statement clearly stated her goals uh, and the map was able to meet them. Uh, one thing our judges did enjoy was that she referenced the 2011 map, uh, the map that was overturned, as something not to do. I think she mapped the opposite of what uh, 2011 did. So um, that was a pretty effective strategy. So congratulations, Natalie. And you'll move on to the um, uh, state. I have that, and I should note right there that says higher right second place. That is an error on my part. That should say first place. So congratulations, Natalie. And then we'll go into the Eastern Higher Ed and do our honorable mentions. <clears throat> so we've got Nate Ferrari uh, from Drexel University, uh, Jessica Dyer from Drexel, and Farzam Mir, um, who uh, I believe Farzam goes to school out of state, but is a Pennsylvania resident uh, and uh, is interning with one of our partners, uh, uh, the Concerned Citizens for Democracy uh, in uh, and around the Philadelphia area. So congratulations to the three of you uh, for your honorable mention uh, mapping submissions. David will announce our second place winner. That'll be Michael Scross from Millersville and a resident of Chester County. So Michael, congrats. Yeah, we know Michael well. Um, he's back in the DTL winner's circle. I think he had a regional honorable mention last time. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I don't recall, but uh, he's back um, with, I think, a better effort this time. 41% uh, compactness score, um, along with a pretty strong minimization of splits. Um, uh, and a nice personal statement. So well done in your second place. Uh, congressional Matt Michael, great work. And then our first place. Christian Grosso, I think maybe the first from Bucks County Community College. That's correct. I think Christian yeah. is part of the first from. Terrific, um, Christian. Uh, former Governor Schweiker would be delighted to know we've got a Bucks County uh, citizen because he's uh, born and raised and represented Bucks County. So good for you. 
So Christian was one of the few mappers who submitted his personal statement via video, which we always enjoy. It breaks up the, uh, you know, the text reading that we uh, and the rest of the judges see a lot. So we'll post that along with Christian's entry. Um, but the video itself um, had a lot of substance to it, too. Um, the map is very strong, um, uh, uh, focused on compactness. Um, he had a, a, a limited population deviation. Um, but uh, uh, he also had strong community outreach as well. And so um, Christian is our, our higher ed first place uh, winner in the Eastern region. So congratulations, Christian. So I believe that is all for our regional winners. David, I'm going to Well, let me just say, say a quick word because we've took a, taken a tour through our uh, high school and higher ed uh, winners. And just to underline how important it is that you – uh, have participated in this. I was thinking back to a number of conversations we had early on with um, uh, Fred Tiemann, who is a great civic leader. I don't know if he's on the call, uh, former chair of our uh, steering committee in the Pittsburgh area, who, who said the reason he was so enthusiastic about Draw the Lines is because it had the chance to engage so many young folks. Uh, and he said he even advanced the idea that maybe drawing the uh, the official process of drawing lines should be left in the hands of, of uh, newly minted voters because he said in fact these are going to be the lines that you're going to draw the districts that you're going to uh, 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 vote on uh, in the next 10 years and that we ought to be forward looking uh, and not uh, uh, rely on the judgment of folks who are um, uh, not going to be voting <laughs> um, into the future. So I just, again, a chance to underline how important it is that all the students and particularly their professors and teachers have been such enthusiastic and energetic participants in this. So good on you. And now, <laughs> should, I cue, should I cue this up too? Yeah, go ahead and cue it up. Okay. so. Some of you, I know we, we, I know we had a great visit with some of the folks from Avignon Heights when we were up there, but back in April and May, uh, to, we set off on uh, what we call the Great Volkswagen Tour of Pennsylvania, uh, featuring our customized 1991 Volkswagen camper uh, to, uh, to, to promote uh, the coming redistricting, to promote Draw the Lines. And um, that tour got a lot of, we, we uh, it was 2,200 miles and 47 stops, uh, all corners of the Commonwealth. We got a lot of media attention. In particular, uh, fe was featured in a, um, a video uh, documentary by Now This uh, Media, which some of you may know is a big social media presence. And I think and we're going to show you a little clip from that. This was seen, I think, last I saw, maybe 85,000 times. So uh, by extension, you all have uh, made quite an imprint on the social media world, and now we'll just watch this uh, watch this clip for a little bit. David, if it, the sound's not coming through, give me a wave. Good. I think gerrymandering is a threat to our democracy because it makes some votes count more than others. It, it divides people, it divides communities. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to do everything we can to make sure that those maps are drawn more fairly with more engagement and input from our communities. The core message that we want to bring to this process of redistricting is that it's got to reflect the interests of Pennsylvanians and their communities. There it is. We saved Allegheny County. What's it look like? Dad, that looks like a dog cage. Our hope this time around, unlike other times, is that, that it's a much more open and transparent process so people can understand 
what's going on and participate in the process. problems of gerrymandering is it, it lessens political competition. If we can draw more fair, more representative maps, that's going to bring on more political competition which will benefit our communities. I think map making is a really good way for people to become more active in their own communities and become more active in determining the fate of their community in terms of political representation. You know, democracy works best when it's a, it's a, it's two-way communication. That's how it's supposed to work. So this is the time to step forward and raise your voice to improve democracy. That was a lot of fun, and uh, the Volkswagen may ride again uh, before this is all over. A little bit of backstory: um, the driveway that we were in Scranton is on one of our stops, and we decided we'd go past President Biden's uh, home, childhood home in in, in uh, Scranton. And so the driveway that I was turning into in that last clip was President Biden's ancestral home. So <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it did give us a chance. We saw Kyle Hines in that video, who was our superstar from State College, who, thanks to his winnings from Draw the Line, is off to Carnegie Mellon, probably started right about now. And, uh, and, and he was a great star. So we had a chance to stop along the way and chat with uh, many of you or, or your predecessors. Uh, so anyway, great fun. All right. So now we're gonna get on to our statewide finalists, or our statewide awards. Let me go back into present mode here. Okay, so I dropped the link uh, to that full video um, in the chat as well, if you're curious to see what the full nine minute, we just played the last three. So check out the full video if, uh, if you'd like. Now, for our statewide winners, we're gonna do it in this order. Uh, we're gonna do the state house and the state senate. So we've only so far announced uh, winners from uh, congressional mapping, and that was just in the youth and higher ed side. But they have filtered into uh, the larger uh, statewide competition here. We also had uh, um, people mapping the state house and state senate, and that was just on the state level. So we'll announce those statewide winners. And then uh, we had a very small uh, adult division uh, for Congress, but we have several winners from there as well. So, um, David, shall we keep doing the um, sure well that we've been doing so Let's far? Let's rock right. and roll. All right. So, I'm going to do uh, on the honorable mention side the PA House first. Uh, Jesse Stoll from Dauphin County, who is a return Draw the Lines winner, and Estella Stein um, from the Baldwin School. Um, you'll see Jesse. Uh, his name will pop up in the Senate side too. Um, uh, and we would strongly uh, encourage you to take a look at uh, Jesse's maps. Um, and Estella did a great job um, uh, with her map uh, drawing PA House uh, as a high school student. Uh, I believe that was her first entry into this. Uh, so excellent work. Now for the big prizes. Second place. This is a, a field dominated by Ryan's. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Code word Ryan. And Ryan, I, I mentioned this. I, I, First of all, congratulations. And I think we met with Ryan when we were up in Erie some some windy uh, spring day. So um, good work. And Ryan's a member of our uh, Citizen Map Corps, um, which we'll talk a little bit about and give them a little more um, spotlight because we're actually going to be inviting all of you to join this Map Corps um, at the end of the uh, conversation today. Uh, but he is, so he's now one a congressional award, a Senate award, and a PA House award now. So he's got the trifecta. Um, uh, and his entry, um, according to judges, it balanced population equivalence, compactness, and it limited splits uh, pretty effectively. And uh, he uh, combined that with a descriptive essay. So well done uh, to Ryan. And then our first place, heard from the school again. 
Ava Zarzicki and Ashley Cho. Congratulations to both of you. We see Baldwin uh, showing up again, and Justin, tell us a little bit about their map. Sure. So Ava and Ashley um, uh, are part of the Baldwin School, and um, Dr. Biss again uh, uh, put together a uh, a pretty intensive course on gerrymandering. And I think Ava and Ashley decided we're not going to do the 17 district map. We're going to try to do the 203 seat map on their first run. And so they did a fantastic job. Uh, um, they uh, uh, were able to create competitive uh, um, districts that split fewer counties and were more compact than the average legislative map that was uh, submitted. Um, uh, and they were able to uh, uh, to do that in their first try. So I mean, if uh, I believe. Back in business. There he is. All right. I apologize. That was on me. I think my internet went out, but it looks like I have most of you back, right? <laughs> okay, I apologize. Okay, now, so where were we? We were with Ava and uh, and Ashley. Ashley. Let me reshare my screen. And so this is the point where, if they are still with us, we would love to have Ava and Ashley unmute themselves. Do we have Ava and Ashley? Yes, we're here. All right, wonderful. Hello. So, congrats, first off. Thank you. Um, Thank you. How did you go about splitting 203 uh, uh, puzzle pieces instead of the 17? What was the thought process there? Um, it was definitely a lot. We started with Philadelphia and kind of worked from there, going one at a time since we started with the biggest part of them, well, the tiniest part of the map. And then we really focus on making them all compact and having a same deviation of population. What was the toughest piece of the map? The big uh, cities probably, um, yeah. because there's so, so much population variety and it's hard to split it if you have like for example, Pittsburgh was the last place we did, but especially when we went about splitting it, um, it was hard to kind of get the rural areas like apart from the urban areas. So it kind of took us time to figure out what to put where. Good for you. And this is the first map you've drawn, is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty astounding. I will confess that I have not yet tried to do a House of Representatives map, so. <laughs> More power to you. Most people have, yeah, yeah. Well done to both of you, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Let's see if we can actually move on through this without me losing any more internet. All right, so we're gonna do honorable mentions now for State Senate. Um, we're gonna hear from Mike, uh, we uh, saw Michael Skros uh, earlier on the congressional side. Um, he's back uh, with a, a very strong Senate map. Uh, and then Anna Wong, um, also from the Baldwin School, um, uh, so congratulations to both of you for your honorable mention efforts. And then David, you can announce our state senate. Second place. Michael Waxenberg, also a, uh, a repeat winner. Uh, Michael, congratulations from up there in Pike County. You so want to Michael, say yeah, thank you both. Thank you both so much. You know, I, I've, I've learned so much from this group and, and especially from the, the younger mappers here and elsewhere. Uh, just want to say thanks for, for all you do and let's keep up the effort. We got another six months to go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well said. So Michael's maps, um, uh, just a quick note on those. Um, he drew two um, and he uh, tried to adhere to the principles uh, espoused in the Legislative and Congressional Redistricting Act or LACRA that is being put forth by fair districts, uh, our friends who are uh, um, doing a lot of work on the legislative side. Um, and so uh, our judges thought that, uh, Michael, you executed those principles uh, very effectively, limiting splits with compact districts, uh, but also attempting to ensure that no political party um, gained any sort of unfair advantage. So congratulations and nice work. He's also going to be joining our Citizen Map for in the fall. So thank you for, for doing that. We appreciate it. And then first place, State Senate. Uh, we've seen Jesse before. So... Congratulations again, Jesse, for your, your great work on the Senate. 
Jesse did something that our judges really appreciated, um, which we haven't had a chance to really uh, um, honor before uh, explicitly. Um, and he created a very uh, strong map uh, and essay uh, looking at the, um, uh, uh, trying to uh, understand how a redistricting map can help perpetuate systemic racism and trying to address that uh, through redrawing uh, a new uh, set of district lines. So. Um, Jesse put in a lot of work in this map, going to data outside of uh, what was available on the platform, uh, getting a lot of uh, community feedback. Uh, and so, Jesse, congratulations. Um, could you talk a little about your process and uh, how it worked in your map? Uh, sure, maybe I can try to remember. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, I remember a, a lot of it was um, just hovering over different areas and seeing what were the what were the different ethnic makeups of different areas? And so a lot of it was very surprising to me that, uh, you know, a, a lot of areas didn't look how I expected them to. Um, so especially like in the Poconos, for instance, I was like, oh, wow, this is a very, uh, the, the ethnic makeup of this whole area is different than what I expected it to be. And so places like that got me thinking differently about, so um, looking into the history of places of, so why are, why are different groups of people different populations living in different parts of the state? How are they being represented or not? How are different voices being heard? Um, and trying to have uh, trying to have basically um, a representation that, that would match the fact that our minorities and ethnic minorities in Pennsylvania are somewhere between 18 to 25 percent of the state. It's, it went up in the most recent census. The count has been going up. Um, but typically, there's about 10 to 12 percent of our districts have been uh, ethnic minority majority districts, and so that that just didn't seem like it was representative of the overall population. So I was trying to figure out how can we represent that better. You did a pretty effective, yeah. You did a very effective job. So we would encourage everyone once it's posted to go uh, check out Jesse's process and scroll around in his map um, to see the work that he did. So congrats. Uh, we're going to move back into the congressional map now with our statewide awards. Um, we had uh, multiple strong entries into the adult category, and so um, our judges wanted to do an honorable mention um, before we get to our top two. And that first one is that honorable mention goes to Daryl Phillips um, from Allegheny County uh, for his creation of three majority minority districts, which is a very difficult task to accomplish. So um, congratulations to Daryl. And then for our second place, uh, I'll let David announce. Corey Cohen from Montgomery County. Congratulations, Corey. Yeah. So Corey was able to emphasize competitive districts uh, that also empowered minority voters, um, and his execution was enough to earn him statewide honors from our judges. Um, he also was able to create five districts um, that, according to the District Builder platform, um, were uh, within 5% uh, of each other in terms of uh, recent voting results, and so um, a uh, pretty strongly competitive map. Uh, as well. So great job, Corey. And then our first place winner, Josh Weissman from Bucks County. Terrific, Josh. So uh, from our judges, uh, Josh's map was a consensus favorite uh, in this division uh, because of his uh, well thought out and descriptive personal statement. Um, he also only split 11 counties uh, with this map. Um, which is uh, uh, something that's obviously the 2011 congressional map and then the 2018 map uh, uh, that was uh, requested by the state Supreme Court. Neither of those accomplished that as well. So um, Josh created a, um, a pretty effective map uh, on the congressional side in the adult division. Um, is Josh available? We get to hear from him. Going once, going twice. No, Josh. Hopefully I wasn't the one that caused him to leave. <laughs> All right. And now for the big prizes here on our uh, higher ed and our youth categories. These are prizes up to $2,000 for first place. Um, we put an extra emphasis on this for a number of reasons. Um, first is we always get more entries within the higher ed and the youth uh, categories, uh, but also because, you know, the emphasis of Draw the Lines has been an education project, particularly around uh, getting young people to uh, engage with this process because they're going to be voting on these for the next 10 years and beyond. And so um, a lot of these folks, this is their first uh, 
um, the upcoming elections will be there first uh, um, uh, on these new districts. So we uh, um, uh, love to um, make sure to get as many kids in these uh, and young adults in these uh, competitions as possible. So um, right to higher ed, it's higher ed second place is what we're gonna see first. Oh, there's Michael again. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, your name's all over the place. Do we, do we still have you, Michael? Guess Michael, not. did he did text me today saying he was you know going to be late to this because uh, he has class. So um, we'll have to give him the good news later. But Michael is one of our MAP Corps members, um, uh, and so we're excited to have uh, his uh, rapidly uh, improving MAP skills in our team. He's gone from regional honoree now to statewide. Um, uh, second place, so great work to Michael. And then our first place. There's Christian. Awesome, good for you. Congrats, Christian. Do we have you on, Christian? Hi. All right, congratulations. Thank you. All right. So we went over your map um, and what the judges thought in the regional round, um, but I did, I wanna ask you, you know, on the video you talked about um, you didn't look at any former congressional maps with the exception of just knowing the Bucks County district. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, talk about that. So, yeah, um, my whole idea is that I wanted a complete, basically blank slate, slate, no influences from any past maps and creating a whole new PA map. Um, so I basically just, except for the first congressional district, I tried to make every one of them like a whole new district. So there would be like, a uh, new competitor, I mean, like it would, they would all be competitive and um, it would just be different, just like different than the past. We did a fantastic job. How many times did you have to shoot the video or did you do it all in one take? I think I did it about four times. Yeah. <laughs> well, congrats. Thank you. All right. And now we're going to go to our youth uh, division, statewide second place. Return of the Ryans. It's, it's one of the Ryans. Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> so Ryan Nee from Whitehall High School um, in Lehigh County. Uh, if you're uh, available, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I think we uh, um, discussed uh, most of the stuff in your um, judge's statement, but uh, we I did want to highlight one more thing that um, uh, Ryan really emphasized in his personal statement, that even though he's not a voter now, um, he will be soon, and he deserves to vote on maps that are uh, drawn fairly and transparently. And so our judges, uh, that really resonated with them. So Ryan Nee, if you're on. His, his mic's not working, he said. So. Oh, no. All right. Well, feel free to type into the chat about your process and, um, or anything that uh, um, you learned about this process. I know Mr. Adams um, uh, has been a, a valuable teacher uh, for Draw the Lines. Um, uh, at Whitehall High School. So we thank you all for uh, participating. Okay, and then first place, our last prize of the night. Nicholas Booth. Congratulations, Nicholas. Nicholas, great work. Um, go ahead and unmute if you're able to. Uh, I think I saw you on earlier. Hello, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm thank you very much. Wow. Right. Congrats. Um, so tell us, I, our judges thought yours was one of the better all around maps and entries that they'd seen, um, not just uh, this, this round, but also throughout the entire um, uh, competition history that we've been doing this. So can you talk a little about your process? You, you went to social media to get a feedback and endorsements from your map, right? Yes, I definitely did. Um, I put out some surveys. I asked people, I explained to them when they inquired about what my map was. And, you know, I talked to them about the principles I went by. Um, I was really unrelentless in the creation of this map. I, I wanted it to be perfect so bad. You know, I, I said it's not possible. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I, I strive for it. Uh, probably the hardest part, I think, was splitting Pittsburgh up into three districts. I really had to go, you know, at a certain point, neighborhood by neighborhood to make sure, um, you know, uh, I had the outcome I wanted to. I wanted it to be balanced, you know, between Republicans and Democrats based on the data that I was given. And I was able to make them, you know, competitive at the same time in doing so. Nice. Well, you did a fantastic job. So congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. On that, 
uh, ends our award ceremony. So I'm going to turn it back to David um, just for some. Thank you, Justin. And, and let me take this opportunity to thank Justin in front of all of you. He has been tireless and creative and persistent and organized and um, all of the success that we've um, that we've achieved so far has an enormous amount to do with Justin. So uh, I don't know how we raise a hand virtually, but, but thank you. So I just wanted just to sort of close out with a little reflection um, about this project and, and where it's headed. Um, about two or three, two years ago, in other words, pre-pandemic at the Committee of 70, uh, we began this effort to promote uh, what we called the five habits of effective citizenship in an initiative uh, known as WeVote. And based on research that we uh, had access to, those, those five habits are as follows. I want to say just a little bit about each. One is you have to be a voter, not just see yourself as having voted, but to see your identity as a voter. The second, and actually two and three are very challenging these days to choose your news wisely. Uh, to be a, a smart um, consumer of news and also to invite diverse perspectives, um, to be open to conversations with people that don't read the same news that you do or don't share the same political perspective. Uh, four is to learn how it works, and that's everything from local government, what you do to get a block party permit, to how a bill gets passed through Congress and everything in between, kind of classic Schoolhouse Rock, uh, for those of you who remember the, uh, uh, that, um, that production. And finally is ACT. And we sort of say that, uh, which, which also means, you know, everything from participating in a project like this to contacting your state representative to if the, if the opportunity arises to run yourself. Uh, so all of the above, that's what makes for effective citizenship. And and, and this project in so many ways embodied each of those. And uh, it, it challenged all of the participants to, um, to think deeply about um, uh, this important but previously obscure decision about how to draw districts to learn something about geography and statistics and history and certainly politics um, and then uh, and translate that all into uh, the kind of work that you've seen tonight. But now we're at number five. <laughs> we're at the part of this whole process that we've been leading up to, which is now that the census data is released uh, and the, uh, on one side, the Legislative Reapportionment Commission, on the other side, on the congressional districts, the House and Senate are uh, gearing up rapidly to actually produce maps. And um, we now have a tremendous opportunity uh, to, uh, to draw on everything that you've learned and that you've taught us uh, to share that perspective with uh, the lawmakers and people who will be sitting down with the actual digital pen to, to draw these maps. So um, with that, Justin wants to change the size for a second. Here we go. So I just want to say something about this Citizen Map Corps, uh, which you've heard reference to and, and, and some of you have already been active participants in. Um, you know, we had, you, you're, you're now part of a community of over 7,000 people who have, as the Brits say, had a go at drawing your own congressional or legislative maps. It's really been an extraordinary outpouring. Um, I was on a call earlier today with folks from the National Conference on State Legislators who, who support legislators around the country and was telling them about uh, the uh, Draw the Lines project and they were just blown away that so many people, you know, age 14 to 84 or thereabouts have participated in this process is just extraordinary. Uh, but now, as we enter the home stretch or the ninth inning or the last quarter or pick your sports analogy, um, we need to do everything to, 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 we can to make sure that, again, what you've learned and what you've taught us translates into the actual maps that the citizens of Pennsylvania will inherit for the next um, 10 years. And that's why we formed uh, this sort of elite 
core, if you will, of the best of our mappers called the Citizen Map Core. And uh, Justin's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how you can, those of you who have been mappers can get involved in that. One of the principal products uh, of the Citizen Map Core is, is going to be unveiled soon, which is uh, the Pennsylvania Citizens Map. Um, and let me just say a word about that. We realized that with so many thousands of Pennsylvanians having drawn maps, we could use, just using basic summary statistics abstract from all of those maps, the, the essence of your combined preferences and priorities and so forth, and turn that around and, and use that to draw an actual map that kind of <clears throat> combined uh, all of the uh, uh, the uh, collected priorities that, that you've expressed in your map. So we will be soon, we we're talking about its release today, we will soon be sharing that publicly. Um, and uh, as a draft, uh, recognizing as many of you know, there is no such thing as a perfect map, but the citizens map has the advantage of having been uh, the product of the work of thousands of Pennsylvanians from all over the Commonwealth, 40 of the 67 counties. So what we are going to urge is that this map be used to set the table for um, subsequent discussions uh, and even um, uh, the actual, uh, as I said, the actual drawing of the uh, so-called real maps. And, um, and we're going to invite you uh, those of you who have stepped up and, uh, and participated in this process to join the Citizens Map Core, the Citizen Map Core, uh, to help advise us on the Citizens Map, to go back to that point five on the habits of citizens, uh, effective citizenship, to make your voice heard, both to your elected representative and to those who are um, uh, in charge of the process. And thanks to a, uh, a generous donor, uh, we have the ability to um, uh, offer a, a stipend to a select number of uh, citizen mappers to participate actively in the core. So, um, you know, as Justin said, the, 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 the point of this was always to make sure that citizens' voices were heard and that those were informed voices and educated voices. And those of you who are, who are watching tonight could see in the descriptions of the maps how well we've, we've met that challenge. But now we, we need to translate that into a robust conversation between uh, those who govern um, at the uh, uh, congressional level or the state uh, Senate and House levels, a conversation between those folks and those who are governed, meaning all the rest of us. So um, exciting uh, opportunities ahead. And Justin, I don't know if you want to say some more about the Citizen Map Corps and what we're up to with that, but um, uh, this is going to be a, a tremendous closing act. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. And this is, like David said, this is the best of the best. And so um, they're going to be meeting uh, first, or we've been meeting for months, um, and our next meeting is tomorrow. And so we would invite any of you, if you're interested in applying to serve, um, to join us. I'll send out uh, the info after this, uh, um, this ceremony, but uh, we would love to have you join us. And this is going to be a way that you can take all the work that you've uh, put into your map or your maps uh, and then make it count beyond just uh, um, what we've done so far. Um, because there's, people are going to pay attention to, uh, um, to the work that you all do uh, because you have experience in this. So um, I'll send out some info uh, on how you can get involved uh, and we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna work on the citizens map in the next week. So um, to make sure that we get it finalized. So uh, we, we would love to have you aboard. And that's all I got from my end. David, do you want to? Awesome. Looks like we're coming in for a landing with about four exactly. minutes of air. Yeah. And uh, maybe a, a special thanks to, again, to all of the teachers and professors that have dug into this and brought your students along. And, and to parents, um, there's a great story from an earlier round about uh, two uh, parents from a, a student at Alderdice High School in Pittsburgh who were concerned that their son was always late to dinner 
and, and they thought, you know, he was up there playing video games and doing who knows what on the internet. And they asked him, you know, why he was always late. And he said, well, I'm working on these maps for draw the lines. <laughs> and he ended up being a winner uh, and uh, probably learned a few things along the way. So I uh, appreciate the, the patience and the support of, of parents and friends and uh, out there as well. It's hard to do these things without that. So with that, uh, unless there's further business, Justin? No, I think we're good. So thank you, everybody. And we'll uh, we'll see you hopefully tomorrow night at the Citizens Map Corps meeting, so. All right, thank you all.